Welcome back. You're watching Commodity Champions. We now shift focus to silver and the global silver prices are trading at a three-year high is nearing $28 an ounce. As for India, prices are at an all-time high above 82,000 rupees per kilo. To discuss the growth in demand for silver and the opportunities to buy, I am now joined by Michael Lorenzio, Executive Director at the Silver Institute. Michael, hi, thank you so much for joining in. We just had a big conversation on gold where the expectations are that the prices will continue to stay heightened. Well, of course, there would be a correction, but the prices will come back to where they are trading right now. What's your sense on silver from here on? Because while the international markets are trading at a three-year highs, for the Indian markets, we're at an all-time high with the projections coming in that we are going higher from here as well. Well, first of all, thank you, Manisha, for the opportunity. And we look forward to coming to Goa in India uh, late this month for the yes. second uh, annual silver conference. And we're really looking forward to that. But to your question, um, it, without a doubt, it's been a great run for silver this year. Uh, we had a 7% increase in the price um, in 2023, and we're already up 16% um, so far through the first quarter and as of April 3rd uh, 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 for this year. So it's strong. There's strong buying. Uh, there's really strong interest in the ETFs and ETPs, and um, that's helping to support the silver price. But, you know, silver, as we all know, is a dual metal. It's both a store of value and uh, a hedge against inflation and and uh, uh, a hard asset, but it's also an industrial metal. And a lot of people are making the industrial play for silver as we continue to set record after record after record with respect to industrial demand. We're putting out our World Silver Survey next two, uh, Wednesday. And uh, I think you're going to see some great numbers there for 2023, especially when it comes to industrial demand. Mm. Any sense on a percentage increase that we've been looking at in sense of silver, Michael? We'll wait for that report, of course, but any indication? Um, can you repeat that? I apologize. Michael, any indication on what kind of industrial growth numbers are we looking at on year on year basis if we look at the last three or five years? Well, look, at it, it, it's going to be strong. We've hit record in 2021, 2022, and 2023. Um, there'll be another record for uh, uh, silver industrial demand. I don't want to front run that um, before we make our announcement next week, but it's safe to say that we're on a pattern here. We're on a glide path where silver is being consumed in so many industries and so many applications that the industrial side for silver is really shooting, shooting to the moon. And one of the reasons is, of course, is the global energy transition and silver's use in photovoltaics. Um, I can say, Last year was a record year for that. Um, and this year is going to be equally as strong. Um, silver's use in uh, um, electric, the electrification of vehicles and charging stations um, and so forth throughout the globe, that's adding to the overall demand increase. And down the road, let's look at AI. Where is silver play in, in, um, in AI? So we discuss that in next week's uh, World Silver Survey which will be available online on, on Wednesday morning for everybody. <laughs> All right, Michael, we will watch out for that. I also want to talk about the global uh, demand and supply. And we do know that we've been working on a deficit since 2018, and that perhaps will not change in 2024 also. That's absolutely correct. We project another deficit. It will be the fourth consecutive deficit um, in the silver market. And uh, we're actually uh, calling for a decrease um, in overall supply uh, this year. And that will come off of um, a decrease last year as well. So the deficits continue. Um, we believe that next year's or this year's deficit will be one of the strongest or largest deficits we've had within the last four years. Mm. Michael, when we talk about precious metals, well, yes, recycling and exchange is a big market when it comes to gold, not such a huge market when it comes to silver, though. No, it only represents about 18% of the market in 2023. Mm. Um, the recycling side for silver is a lot more difficult than it is for gold. It used to be very predominant um, when, 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 when photography uh, was a mainstay with respect to silver's use in industrial applications. But today it's just more difficult. I mean, um, it's hard, silver's smaller. Uh, it's hard to get into the components of a, some of these technical. Uh, technologies that we're using, computers, cell phones, and so forth. So it's just it's just really, really, really difficult. Mm. 
When it comes about India buying and uh, the month of Feb has been stronger yet again, record uh, amount of purchases coming in from India and that was a good uh, move I would say from Indians because the prices were still weaker or lower at that time. March and April have given us such a huge jump up. How are you looking at the India buying when it comes to silver? Well, we think it's going to be strong and as uh, Mr. New and Philip alluded to earlier with respect to the festival season um, on the horizon, we think that silver, uh, given its price point, in relation to gold, um, we'll have an exceptional year in India. Look at India demand last year from the investment side fell a bit, and it fell because it was coming off such a high number in 2022. But we have indications and we're seeing that that number is being pushed up. Uh, the recent launch of your exchange traded products um, in, uh, in India may have some negative effect on uh, physical investment, bars and coins, but it, what it is essentially is another investment opportunity uh, uh, for Indians to buy silver. Mm -hmm. Michael, there are various reports suggesting that silver will outperform gold in the next 6 to 12 months, while India, as you said, would be a strong buyer. How are you looking at various other geographies? Well, we've got some catching up to do with respect to gold, right? I mean, gold is having a fantastic six months or over a year, and they really started off on fire in uh, 2024. But the gold and silver ratio is decreasing, even as we speak. It's about 85, 86 right now. Mm. But, you know, last year it was above 92, 93. So the number of ounces it takes to buy one ounce of, of gold, that number is shrinking. We think silver is going to have an exceptional year. We called for that back in January. We'll highlight that again next week. And throughout the year, we'll keep on focusing on what silver is to the average individual across the world its importance in the in the global energy transition and what a great store of value uh, it is for people to own silver. Mm. Uh, what would you say is, is a better way of buying silver, Michael? Well, it all depends on the individual. It really does. It's so easy to get into an exchange traded product. First of all, you don't have storage fees. You don't have to carry insurance costs um, and so forth. But there are a lot of people who like to hold the metal. Um, in the United States and across the globe, they're known as silver stackers, and they buy silver. They buy whatever they can afford, two coins a week, um, a bar a week or whatever, and they hold it, and they hold it in their home, and they stack it. And there's a whole online community totally devoted to stacking and storing their silver. Um, they're quite, quite uh, vocal and active, and, um, you know, we like to help them out in any way we can because... Mm -hmm. Look, at, they're buying silver and they're passionate about it. Mm. You know, when we talk about gold, Michael, there are various uh, uh, all-inclusive cost of production gold, which is anywhere between 1,000 to uh, 1,500 when you look at various countries. When it comes to silver, what is all-inclusive cost of production? Well, I believe that number that we're going to be releasing next week is just north of $17 U.S. Okay. per ounce. Um, and that's quite an increase based as $13 a year before. But what we're experiencing at these mine sites and so forth and the mining companies um, are higher energy costs, um, higher loading costs and with respect to uh, 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 the energy um, used to produce an ounce of silver, um, higher labor costs, for example. Um, and it's all inflationary based. We expect that number to come down, but um, it, it's right around $17 per ounce right now. So at $27, $28 an ounce per silver, at least in the U.S. market. Um, there's a lot of bandwidth there for uh, future, uh, the future of these mining companies, which are very, very strong to begin with. Also, Michael, what's your sense on the prices from here on? Because we are just about at 27, 28, way off its all-time highs. Where do you think the silver prices are going? Well, that's an interesting question. I think there's a lot of room for growth there, okay? I think the average price is going to be much higher than it was last year. I think that as investors as uh, turn to silver, um, then they may be following gold. But nonetheless, it's going to be a good year for silver. I don't know the exact number uh, where we're going to land. But I can safely say that it will be a substantial increase over 2023. Mm. Michael, also, how much would you advise holding silver in a portfolio? Because when it comes to gold, well, there are various numbers, yes, but anywhere between 5 to 20 percent is what we keep hearing within that. When it comes to silver, well, again, the conversation is that of what you mm -hmm. hold gold, 30 percent of that should be silver. 
What's your calculation? What's your sense? Well, I mean, that's not a, that's not a bad number, to be quite honest with you. I mean, we, on the gold side, I've heard anything between 5 to 15, even 20 percent in hard assets, with some of that being in gold. And I think the same thing is true for silver. I think that uh, portfolio diversification in the event of a major economic uh, calamity uh, like we experienced in uh, 2008 um, is a good hedge. And look, at as the U.S. Fed begins to cut rates at some point this year, that's a win-win for the precious metals complex. And silver is going to be on that ride. OK, so the silver price will experience um, a nice uptick once those cuts come into play. Mm. Michael, I would also want to know on uh, how would you look at a support coming in for silver? I mean, of course, we, we as you said, we've seen 16% of gains in the first quarter of this year. 28 is holding right now. Do you see a correction at all? Uh, $17 is a cost of production here. Uh, what is the range that you would look for the silver prices going forward from here? Um, again, I can't give you an exact number on that, but I don't think we're going to fall too far from where we are right now. Mm. The thing with silver is, is it, it tends to go up fast. And it tends to come down fast as well when you look at the gold price and other precious metals. But right now, um, I'm reading reports from banks and so forth that the above ground stocks of silver are being mobilized as we speak mm. uh, to meet this growing demand. Um, so that's only going to help uh, buttress the price of silver as we move through the remainder of this year. Mm. Michael, uh, you've talked about uh, investing. You've talked also about the Indian retail demand. It's about the, uh, you know, the industrial demand that I want to put pull in a point yet again. You said it's been a record number in 2021 and until 2023, 24 perhaps could go the same way as well. Is there enough silver really going forward? Because the most more bullish reports are from 2025 and beyond. Right. So look, at that is a, that is the empirical question of the day. Um, we do have silver in above ground stocks. And the question is, at what price point are those stocks mobilized? And we're starting to see that now. Um, we're starting to see some of the stocks in the LBMA, some of the stocks overseas in Europe and so forth, uh, uh, being um, used to meet this growing demand for silver. And as we move through the energy transition, we're going to see even more silver being drawn down from these stocks. Mm. So uh, currently, what is the inventory like on ground uh, for uh, worth how much? Because I was reading a report suggesting that we have inventories for just about 15 months is what is available. Um, I'd have to I'd have to get back to you on that actual number. Um, there is a, there is there is ample silver above ground. But let me just say it is being winnowed down as we speak. OK, so above ground stocks at these various exchanges and so forth. Um, they are being they are being used to meet this growing demand and continual demand for not only the investment side now, but of course, um, industrial demand as well. All right, point taken. Industrial demand has been on a record high. We'll go with that from 2021 until now. And as uh, Michael tells us that recycle isn't coming so much, buying is on the stronger side. And well, yes, silver can perform uh, gold uh, going forward in the next six to 12 months is something that almost everybody seems to be telling us. Michael, as always, thank you so much for joining us. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Commodity Champions. Thank you for watching.